Welcome back to the Imaginary Gallery. It's TJ, your host. Tonight's topic falls within the narcissist bag of tricks, which also applies to the psychopath, sociopath, all the other cluster Bs. Someone asked recently, what's a cluster B personality? And I went straight to the Wikipedia definition. Wikipedia is reliable for certain types of information. However, it's completely unreliable, like Snopes when it comes to controversial cover-ups or lies that we're told. Cluster B personality disorders, just in case anyone hears that phrase over and over, reads it in my descriptions and wonders what it is. I assumed most people knew, but you should never assume. Cluster B personality disorders are a categorization of personality disorders as defined in the Bible for the psychological community called the DSM-4 and DSM-5. Cluster B personality disorders are characterized by dramatic, overly emotional, or unpredictable thinking or behavior and interactions with others. They include antisocial personality disorder, which is the same thing as psychopath. It's the fancier new name for it. Borderline personality disorder, histrionic personality disorder, and narcissistic personality disorder. Somebody else asked what a narcopath is. It's not really recognized by the psychological community. It's kind of like a blending of the words because many of these creatures share traits across the different labels that are given for them. It also states that the British National Health Service has described those with this disorder as someone who struggles to relate to others. As a result, they show patterns of behavior most would regard as dramatic, erratic, and threatening or disturbing. Again, the ones that are listed there for Cluster B, these different disorders overlap when it comes down to it, it's really somebody's opinion based on a name they've given it. All you really need to know is that they're all toxic and they all have very similar characteristics at times. So we're going to discuss the subject I've covered once before called gaslighting. I'll be using more than one source for references as well. As I've stated before, the term gaslighting I've been hearing in mainstream media, I've seen it casually being spoken, so it's come a long way. When we talk about gaslighting in relation to the narcissistic personality disorder or the psychopath, either way it comes from a movie with the same name, Gaslight, which I actually bought two different versions of, in case you forgot. In a nutshell, referencing now Thomas Sheridan's book, Puzzling People, The Labyrinth of the Psychopath, he tells us that Gaslight is a classic Hollywood movie based on a play. This word Gaslight has been chosen, I would say intelligently, to refer to the way that these cluster B creatures alter reality around their targets or their victims. They ultimately destroy their target psychological sovereignty and eventually their sanity. Yes, it's true. I can attest to that because I've been through the gaslighting process. Even more frustrating is if it's happening and you see it happening, if you tell the other person, You're gaslighting me. They'll just laugh at you and say, What are you talking about? What are you going on about? Oh, you're crazy. And that's the end of their input. This modus gives the psychopath complete control over the target or the victim. The original 1940s film was set in London in 1880 at the home of a Jack Manningham and his wife Bella. And she's an emotionally drained woman who cannot make sense of her husband's clandestine disappearances from their home. He won't tell her where he's going when he's gone, constantly deflecting the issue or playing down her concerns. Her anxiety gets further compounded because he ends up flirting with the female servant that he employs in their comfortable upper middle class home. Jack is intent on convincing his wife that she's going nuts. And this is where the inner psychopath takes over from the average cheating spouse. And in order to achieve this, he constantly turns down the level of the gas-powered lighting in their old-fashioned house. Well, the spouse, having this husband who's gone all the time, sometimes will bring up this subject to her husband and say, Honey, the lights seem to go down at certain times of the evening. And her wicked, psychopathic husband tells her, Oh, you're imagining that. Just like when I was catching the long-term partner in misdeeds and pretty much knew they were going on, I would say flat out, you're having an affair with so-and-so because I had enough information and evidence to know at this point. The response was, oh, you're imagining that. Oh, you're paranoid and all the other nonsense these fools say. When, to my credit, it turned out it was true. 
the whole time. But it's a horrible feeling until you get to that point where you are just piecing together everything and you see it exactly for what it is and all you need the other person to do to proceed in your reality is to admit the obvious and then discuss it from there but you never get to that point with these creatures. The husband tells her, oh, the lights are the same all the time as they've always been. Eventually, a sympathetic policeman alerts this lady that she's married to a psychopath. He's attempting to make her believe that she's going insane. The symbolism of the increasingly darkened rooms mirrors Bella's descent into the psychopathic labyrinth towards which her husband is pushing her. Sheridan says, and I agree, that it's a very powerful and profound metaphor for the predatory mindset of these nasty creatures. The term gaslighting has thus come to represent psychological mind control abuse in which false information is presented to the victim, altering their sense of reality and destroying the victim's faith in their own discernment. I also located an article by Miss Queen Being of which I've watched some of her videos, but she's got an actual article, which I'll provide a link to in the description box, called Toxic Narcissism in Relationships, the Top 10 Warning Signs You're Being Gaslighted. She begins by telling you that if you've ever had a friend or family member or co-worker who's a narcissist or, she says, suffers from narcissistic personality disorder, chances are you've been the victim of gaslighting, which is a manipulation technique that they use to get whatever they want kind of strange she chose the word suffers from because as far as these creatures go they ain't suffering from nothing but I believe she's looking at it from our viewpoint yes they are suffering because it's a disorder they like to create a reaction it could be anger frustration or sadness and the victim or target is what Yashar Ali in Huffington Post article said but then when the person reacts the gaslighting person makes them feel uncomfortable and insecure by behaving as if their feelings are not normal or rational in real life would be like if you're out with your prom date for the evening you can't help but notice he keeps smiling at some other girl the whole night you can tell he's flirting with her he winks at her and he behaves in ways that you think are just appalling. You're thinking, this is my night, and what's he doing? If you were to say, why do you keep looking at her? Why do you keep talking to her? You'll be given gaslighting, which would look like, oh, you're crazy. She's a friend of mine. Oh, she's part of my family. You're too sensitive. What are you doing? What's wrong with you? You're going to hear all this beforehand, knowing that what you're seeing is completely wrong. Then you've got this reaction, which is acting like your interpretation of events are wrong. That makes you go crazy. And a lot of times we want to run to a source of support and say, look, he looked at her six times. He winked. I saw his tongue come out at one point. Don't you think he's flirting? And of course, you can do that with a third party and they may agree with you. But the problem is, they're not there. They don't know the mind control you're under and neither do you in most cases. But it's true. They make it out like your reaction is completely inappropriate when you know it's not. Plus, but I learned also that if you, for example, were doing the very same thing, you better believe this creature would be on to you immediately, questioning you. When it comes to their behavior, strangely, it doesn't apply because there's no empathy, because you're just an object to these creatures. And she does warn us that the signs you're being gaslighted may seem obvious to some. The fact is that when you're under the influence of one of these creatures, you can't always see the proverbial forest for the trees. She tells you that if you find yourself feeling you might be a little crazy, which is the whole point of this technique, or even if you're aware that it's happening and want to recognize it as it happens, understanding the signs can be the first step in making your life <laughs> a little bit better. So if you know what these signs are, you can react differently and you can sometimes change the course of the outcome. So here are her 10 warning signs that you're being gaslighted. Number one, that your fears will be used against you. These charming creatures, when they want to be, will listen to every single word you say, which I've covered before, how they just listen to every single thing, and they soak it all in, and they file it away. And if you reveal any vulnerabilities, which is common, because typically when you're with such a friendly person, you will feel so comfortable with this person, like they're going to be interested in you, even if you told them that you have three heads, and they're hidden from them, they'll still love you anyway. Then you feel, well, I could tell this insecurity because you feel open. Well, that's the whole point. You're stepping into their trap. Her example is if you thought you're a little bit overweight, like, oh, I look fat in this, don't I? <laughs> they're going to pick up on that and they're going to realize this person's insecure about their weight. They'll be like, oh, no, you look fine at that moment. But then, later on, they may make discreet jokes about your weight, or they may talk about other people who are thinner than you. But look at her figure. Hmm, that's nice. 
she seems like she only weighs this. And that'll get you to be like, oh my goodness. The second sign is, you don't know your own mind. Some of these creatures will claim they know what you or others are thinking. If you tell them that they're wrong, they'll secretly think you're lying. They'll make faces or gestures to indicate this, or in the most extreme cases, they might say you're lying, and even accuse you of lying to yourself. These creatures are never wrong. The third one is, you do not know what normal is. If you're regularly being told, like that lady in the movie, that things are normal when you know deep down they're not, then you're probably a victim of gaslighting. Like if your evil boss says to you, you need to lie to that client about the safety of this item we're going to sell them. And if you refuse, you may be told that all employees lie on behalf of the employers. And if you don't want to be a team player, then find another job. The fourth one is you're diagnosed with major issues. When these lying, manipulating creatures isn't getting what they want for their way, they may turn up the intensity by questioning you, saying you're sanity, like you're crazy. You're paranoid. You're stressed out. You're too sensitive. You're hormonal. You need therapy. <laughs> I've heard all many of these. It's sickening. Yes, they do use these exact suggestions. The fifth one, you doubt your own beliefs and perceptions. This creature will tell you that what you think you know to be true or real is not real. Like if your narcissistic mother tells you that your new boyfriend's a loser and you need to get rid of it, after a while you might believe it and might end up sabotaging that relationship because you begin to question your own judgment because you think well mother knows best she knows he's no good i just can't see it oh uh, honey i think it's over the sixth one is you can't remember anything anymore these creatures have selective memory and they'll deny they said something previously that upset you if you bring it up at a later time i thought it was really rude that night that you told me i looked like a watermelon on toothpicks i never said that or it might promise to do something later and then tell you that it never happened. Or use creative language to downplay its behavior and act like, Oh, you're just being too sensitive. Oh, you're thinking too much about things. The seventh item is you lie to keep the peace. This is a good one. You're not a liar by nature, and you don't typically lie to others in your life, but because of the horrifying stress that this creature causes or the anger you experience, you may find yourself bending the truth just a little just to avoid that verbal or physical abuse that is sure to follow any kind of discussion that goes against this creature's rules. The eighth one, you stop trying to be heard. Now, we as human beings are programmed to share our experiences and our thoughts with people in our lives. But when you're dealing with one of these creatures and there are signs you're being gaslighted, you might as well, as I say, give up. Don't talk about yourself any longer in front of this creature. Depending on the depth of this relationship, you might even stop talking about yourself altogether to anybody. And then one day, somebody may come up and say, Hey, tell me something about yourself. And they may ask for a certain detail. And you may find yourself completely lost, thinking, I don't know anymore. Well, that's a symptom you've been gaslighted. You may even forget how to talk about yourself. The ninth one is you start thinking maybe you really are the crazy one. Because these manipulation tactics of these creatures, they can really get to you. If you're in this situation, you could feel exhausted from the roller coaster ride that this creature's taken you on. It's difficult because nobody else can usually see it. If you go to somebody else and say, oh my goodness, it's doing these terrible things, they're going to see it smiling and acting charming and think, there's nothing wrong with that person. I think there's something wrong with you. And I've had that happen too, which is sick. They manipulate more than just you, but if you're looking for a solution in these cases, you may just want to end the disagreement. You may convince yourself that this creature is accurate and right, and that there are things you could be doing much better. Then you start to think, maybe that creature's reaction to your behavior was logical. You've made mistakes. Maybe you owe this person an apology. Only later, the narcissist creature to throw your bad behavior back in your face when it serves it. The tenth one is you are depressed. The narcissist creature wears down the target. The target may become depressed and anxious and will question him or herself and feel pretty much hopeless. And you get confused and start to feel disoriented. And thanks to all those references to your paranoia and your memory issues, you may go out seeking help for depression rather than the actual problem, which is the gaslighting cluster B creature narcissist in your life. Honey. I think it's time you realize. But I'm not just a narcopath, but I am THE narcopath. The hottest narcopath you'll ever meet. Don't you forget it. You had a chance with this one and you blew it. I've got some more confessions for you. How does that tickle your whistle? During our relationship, or whatever you want to call it, I try to take on a lot of the action. I did try to organize our schedules together around holidays, especially ones coming up, because 
I knew that I'd set about 10 bombs, which means 10 bad things I didn't want you to know about. I knew there was a chance at any moment you might find out about any one of the 10, so I had to wing it. Be the daredevil that I am. Schedule for insurance purposes. Several months ahead holidays. I tell you to take the day off so we could spend it together, even though at the time we barely knew each other. But you went along with it because I was so irresistible. Who could blame you? Well, if you must know, all of that was fake. I could not stand your family. I couldn't stand you, most of all. Ugh. If you knew the truth, I was kind of jealous. Because you seem to have accomplished so many more things than I have, and I didn't want to let that get to me, so I just tried to discount it all and say it was stupid stuff that anybody could do. Track, football, team, class, but anyone could do that, even though I get smashed out there on that field. And yes, many of the things you guessed at when I wouldn't come home or call for days, you would it was with the farm guy, which it was most of the time. But it's your fault because you always accused me of being with him. You know, I was talking to him about it one day, and he said he wanted to do it with me. Would you turn that down? I don't think so. Because of you, you kind of brought us together. You have yourself to thank for that. Don't be blaming me for your actions. You never could take responsibility for your own actions. You want to blame everything on me. Well, I will not accept it. <laughs> Ooh, yes, I know. When we first started together, we were in the sack three times a day. That was for a good cause, to get you hooked. To make you think you didn't need any other chick because I could do it all for you. Once you gave me the ring and moved me in, I kept it up for a little while, but then I started looking ugly with no makeup, furry body, stubble. And I stopped taking baths and showers. I knew that would drive you away and you didn't want to touch me because I stuck. Fine with me, I got what I wanted. I got the house, I got you, I got your bank account, I even got some of your clothes that you don't even know about. <laughs> I guess you do now, but that's the way things go with the narco bath. Since I'm giving you all conditions, I might as well tell you. I have a fetish. That's right. I like to have as many people inside there as I can get. Of course, never with any protection. Those kids don't care. They're all doing it to themselves anyway, with each other. My thrill is to be so filled up with fluids. I carry them around with a tight twat. I squeeze it and hold it in all day and imagine all the babies I'd have if they were to fertilize my rotten eggs. I know the one time I forgot to clean out and I got excited and laughed and squirted a bunch of stuff on the floor and <laughs> you asked what that was and I just told you I wet my panty. I didn't know what else to say even though it was thick and creamy but I told you again I had a yeast reflection. You shouldn't ask so many questions. Really, I'm glad. I'm not falling for that trick again. I've got to get out of here. I'm going to do an audition. I think I'm going to be the next Bajork. I'm going to try at least. We already have one, but I think I can do better. Ugh, Sandy Hope stars my name. I'm going to be a household name by next year. Oh, Charles. Rick's away and John doesn't know. So if you want to come over tonight, I'll show you my new tattoo. <laughs> Got your initials. <laughs> it also means a few other things too, but... <laughs> You'll never need to know that. Just give me a call. You touch it all down play. You promised your love how much you care. I feel this, I feel I'm sure. Your actions are lacking, nothing is.
Thank you.